I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing with Twilio. You can probably figure out we're a customer. We think we're hopefully a good one. We're using as much as we can figure out to use. Um, a little bit about myself. I've been at Tree or Lending Tree for seven years, just about seven years, and have spent most of my time in the non-lending part of the business. So I've built, bought, sold, started, stopped pretty much everything we can think up under the sun that's not lending, real estate, insurance, got into healthcare, we're out of it, autos, home services, uh, education. We, um, we've kind of been into a lot of different stuff that might not be as obvious as the lending tree business. And at one point, um, I also ran all the product development for the company. When I first came into the company, I was in a product dev role in the real estate business. And um, part of what I'm going to do today is, is give you a little history and context of what brought us to where we are on the Twilio platform and then describe what we've done. And it's really around this concept of an integrated platform for lead gen. Um, the, fundamental, the, the fundamental thing that I think brings me here today is, um, Ankur mentioned it, but we, we, we're, a, we're a startup and we're a legacy company at the same time. So we're kind of duking it out with affiliates on a regular basis and that's sort of in some ways bleeding edge of online marketing. And we're, we're always more expensive and we're operating at a bigger scale than our more nimble, smaller competitors. And so we have to constantly kind of recreate ourselves. So on the one hand, we have this sort of battleship thing moving along that's got this you know, big capital expense behind it. And then we have this process of constantly trying to figure out new stuff that will essentially destroy whatever we thought was smart the last time we did it. So part of my background is really helpful for that. I mean, architecture and structural engineering are sort of, you know, one's a circular process. You know, you start, you jump in the design, you go around, you test your theories, and you kind of reevaluate it all the way. And then engineering is much more linear. You know, you start in the beginning and you follow the follow the rules and you come out with a formula that hopefully isn't going to fall over. The difference in software and especially on the web that I've come to love is that your products aren't going to last 75 years. They might last a week in the case of some campaigns or an event. They might last a few months or if you're lucky a couple of years. And I think part of the, the storyline about Twilio is that it's, it's a case in point at a moment in time, which is today where things that we thought were our core business a few years ago really are just you know, there for rent. We don't have to build this stuff. We don't have to be experts in it. Twilio makes it easy. So um, around telephony, I've seen it done different ways at different companies. Legacy systems and you know, new fangled systems, small one office operations to multi-tenant multi-operation. I've installed VoIP, POTS lines, dedicated fiber optic. I mean, we've done it all. When we had a real estate brokerage with 20 offices, we had frame relays and, you know, switches and all this stuff. And, um, you know, my life's a lot simpler now, not having to do that. Um, at times, we've had 2,500 people in a call center. Now we have, like, 30 and we have several outsource partners. So we've kind of run the gamut on the things we've tried to do. At three, in our company's history, that at least that I'm aware of, we have three distinct phases of this thing. At Lending Tree, like in the beginning, there was a call center. There was a commercial on TV. When banks compete, you win. 555 Tree, you call the call center. It gets you on the phone fill out your form, send it to a lender. Now in the beginning, literally 1996, there were actually no lenders. There was a person who would physically call the lenders. And then the lenders would be able to receive the forms. Now the lenders can actually receive a phone call. That's call center to call center. We haven't yet in Lending Tree gotten to a pass through of straight to the LOs. The lenders still don't want that to happen. But in other businesses we've gotten there, 
Each time we've gone through the process of trying to solve the telephony conversion, we're thinking about this laundry list, which is probably familiar to anyone who's thinking about this stuff. It's got to be flexible, scalable, at least predictable cost, and ideally low cost. You can track what you're doing. Um, you need to predict, at least insofar as you can at the moment, what your next product line is going to be so you don't box yourself in a corner. And then for us, it's always been we have both online and offline channels, although the proportion of each has varied over time. So I'm hoping that if you're either in a large company or you're in some part of the startup world that's solving a chunk of this problem or is in lead gen, this is going to be interesting. If you're an executive like I am now, it's um, you know, hopefully useful. Or if you're a developer, a product person, or somebody who's got like a marketing problem, this is going to be useful. I'm not overly engineering useful anymore. I can code a little bit, but not much. If you have questions as I go along, just shout them out. I'll try to address them. I think we'll have time at the end, but you don't need to hold them. Um, so the way I'm going to sort of bring the talk together, I'll give you a little history about what LendingTree originally did, and then our real estate business, and then now our home services business, which is entirely built and integrated on Twilio. To the extent which I start to get worried you know, that Twilio is not going to be Twilio as I know it today for too much longer, but we'll live with that. Um, as a lead gen company, which has gotten kind of a dirty name over the years, I mean, we make money when our clients make money. So we grow and we prosper when the people buying our leads grow and prosper. Sort of sounds simple, but in our world, the way our end clients prosper is they get offline conversions. They're not selling digital products, they're not selling music, they're not downloadable stuff. Um, it's usually not an online credit card transaction. It's a, it's a loan on your home. You know, Somebody's got to go and look at your house and say, yes, that's physically there, and you are who you say you are, and nowadays, you, you know, hopefully you qualify. In insurance, it's similar. You know, there's a policy. They've got to go out and write, underwrite the building or the car. Education, you actually show up at the school or you, you, know, you enroll online. So it's, an, it's fundamentally an offline thing. And so the highest and most intent-driven consumer is, is always on the phone at some point. So if you kind of think about it, how do you get the consumer on the phone? Who gets them on the phone? How do you track it? How do you get paid? Now we can send a digital lead to a loan officer or an insurance company or a plumber, but they have to call them. So, you know, over the years we've made our name by marketing our brands and sending those consumers to our partners who then call the consumer. And of course there's phone calls too. So it's the, the sort of granularity of the tracking and the offline conversion, which is always by phone, is sort of the, it's been the evolution that's leading us to the end of this talk in home services. It's going back now more than a dozen years when LendingTree was founded. They built a call center the kind of old fashioned way, ways that would be familiar to anyone who's worked in a big company with thousands of seats. When I started in the company, we had, we had 2,600 people in the company and like 1,500 were in call centers. It was a huge operation. I mean, we had a call center in Florida. We had call centers in Charlotte. We had 400 loan officers in California. I mean, a big, nasty systems. Really expensive switches, really expensive hardware installed on the CSRs, desktops really expensive reporting, scheduling. It all worked. I don't want to say it didn't work. It worked beautifully. But when you start to think about it in today's terms, that's not necessarily the place you would want to start today. If you have an idea, you say, hey, I wonder if call center is going to work, if this is going to add some value to my customers. You wouldn't really want to go through all that. Now, with us, the question is, since we have it, Whenever we do something new, should we constantly be trying to, 
you know, shoehorn our project into the legacy system. And over time, sometimes we do that. The other thing was about these older systems is the tracking. So some of the campaigns were by design not very easy to track. And you can kind of think about it from a marketer's perspective. You know, sometimes you want to put $50 million on TV and you don't necessarily want to know that that ad or that ad or that ad did or didn't perform as well as all of it. Um, the other thing that happens is not only do you have expensive software on everybody's desktop, but you have expensive phones. Um, so there's sort of, and then you have servers for all the stuff, and then you have these third party systems for recording and quality management. And we're in a, several of our industries are heavily regulated, so we have Sarbanes Oxley considerations and legal compliance and different state by state regulations. So, like, the business logic around routing and who's got a license and who's available can be sort of daunting. So, once you get the thing set up, you don't really want to change it. That's kind of the point. So suffice it to say that Lending Tree through, call it 2005 or six, all this stuff worked well, and there really wasn't any other option. Well, we bought a business called, well, we had had a real estate business for a while, but we bought realestate.com from Prime Media, and we got this bright idea we're going to build a massive real estate portal, build a real estate brokerage. Um, and vertically integrate in the real estate business. Now, one of the current kind of cornerstones of the concept was we were gonna do warm transfers from the web, from a listings environment, property by property, to agents in the field who we would know were available. They would be able to, now some of this stuff sounds simple these days, they would publish their schedule in a portal, we would know statistics about their conversion, the zip codes they cover, whatever, how many calls they'd gotten so far that month or that day. And on the, calls, on the call system side, we would be able to track our marketing dollars from a campaign through the listings environment, through click to call or call me now or a direct phone call through the call center, routed, tracked, published to the agent with all the appended data, and then ultimately to a home transaction several months later. We did it, we built it. It cost an insane amount of money I mean, I spent a lot of time in 2006 doing this. And um, in 2009, I became the GM of that business. And, you know, it was a good system. The thing worked. I mean, we had 2 million listings out there, and we had 1,500 agents around the country and 20 offices and, you know, something like 50,000 phone calls a month. It, was, it, all, it all worked great. But the thing that it, the kind of point of it is, is at that time, the only solution that we had to meet our imagination was switch, expensive call center software, this thing Genesis that we had to customize to all get out for millions of dollars, something like 50 man months of development time to launch the thing, and then four or five engineers full time to maintain it, tweak it, optimize it. And we were still stuck with the physical phone system. You know, we had a bank of 800 numbers that were expensive to provision and manage, and, but that's what we had for tracking. And so what ends up happening there is that real estate was very dependent on search, search marketing. Lending tree, a lot of brand terms, like, you know, people are filling out the form, some people call, it's fine. Real estate, when you do search engine marketing, you wanna know that this campaign with this keyword generated this call, sold for this amount six months later, you really need a phone number that you can track down to the campaign level. Now that seems okay. Lending Tree basically markets their brand, so they need a few numbers, they have a few campaigns. Real estate, we had millions of campaigns. Geolocal campaigns, local phone numbers, national campaigns, buying, selling, you know, it's just a lot more complicated. So the scale problem on the phone side became to really, really difficult for tracking. We eventually sold that business 2010. And so when we bought Dunright in 2009 and it came time to rebuild the home services platform, I didn't have the real estate system 
at that time to look at as an option. So the home services business we acquired in 2009 was all offline. Printed directories, individually tracked metered numbers that bill the merchants on a paper call basis. We bought the business, business had a system, worked great. Um, it was a rest board, so they could provision their own numbers, and it, tracking and whatever. It's all good. The problem became that it wouldn't support online marketing because it was only phone calls. So to generate a form, it just we couldn't integrate the billing solution on the old platform with the new desire, the new imagination. So when I started looking around and the team started looking around for solutions, we didn't have the real estate system, lending tree systems very old. What are we going to do? Well, I think you can probably figure out we selected Twilio, but the reason we did it was feature rich, cost effective, flexible, scalable, product roadmap was in line with what we wanted to do. Um, we could basically rent instead of buy. You know, we can do it on a paper. So the cost was, um, it fit our business model. You know, it turns into something we can predict, which is really valuable for us. So essentially, we buy media at a known price, and we basically want to know what we're going to be able to sell it for. So having a predictable cost is good. Um, and I think, I think the thing that's sort of that I think hopefully as I describe the done right system that's going to sort of reveal how powerful Twilio is to us is um, it puts our focus, it having all of these features essentially there for us pointed out that only a couple of years earlier nothing on the market could do this and we had to spend millions of dollars customizing it and when we went in to start building the new home services platform on Twilio. If real estate took us 50 man months, the new build of home services, which was much more complicated and feature rich from a telephony perspective, took less than 10 man months. And I don't have anybody full time watching the thing. So if I had a team of five watching our Genesis system, and something was breaking all the time and whatever, whatever. Hardware upgrades after the years go by. Like, I don't have any of that with Twilio. If I had a rest borg that I could get phone numbers for 10 cents and, you know, maybe they're 35 or 50 or 70 or whatever they are on Twilio, it's totally worth it because I can provision them on the fly. If I don't like the number, I just throw it back. If I was paying Verizon you know, off our switch at the office, a couple pennies per minute. It's basically the same on Twilio. So it became a fairly easy choice in all reality. And the truth is the home services business is small. So it wasn't going to be able to afford a huge capital build anyways. So it's effectively a tiny startup. We needed something really cheap and flexible. So what did we do? We have an integrated marketing platform, billing platform, content management platform, customer service, sales, all based on Twilio. They're all plugged in. Did we get resistance? Yes. <laughs> yes. And so, um, you, I don't know, how, how many people are in a big company now? Okay, a few. So basically the way we did this from an enterprise perspective is we, we set it, because of our Sarbanes-Oxley setup, um, we set off the home services business and the build of this little platform into an experimental bucket. So it's sort of, we were able to classify it as an experiment. And that involved putting data in Amazon 
in the cloud. Customer records, we've never done that before. That involve letting somebody else store our recordings, which we've never done before. Um, we had a third party credit card billing solution, which we've never done before. Um, kind of a, like a whole number of loopholes that we had to close. And one of the biggest ones that I mean, probably seems funny, it seems kind of funny to me now, but one of the biggest things was these crazy, I'm not even sure how they work entirely, but they're these encrypted credential strings that have to get passed back and forth between various services. Like that was like the biggest thing. We had to get at somebody to open all the ports. I was like, you know, somebody's gonna get our social security numbers. Of course it never happened, but like that was the biggest fear. So a lot of pushback that took some time, but it was, nothing's ever gone wrong. And that process, um, that was one of the reasons why when we built, we bought the home services business in 2009, it was more than a year until we started building the new platform. Just a lot of that discussion. Um, all right, so integrated billing content management. So, okay, think about it this way. In home services, we're, we're supporting over 100 categories of home improvement projects. So you would think about these things. In the lending world, that would be like refinance or purchase. Those would be the two products the lenders are buying. In home services, they're buying 110 different things from us. Plumbing, windows, you know, electricity of whatever sort, water heater, you know, remodeling, what a mold removal. I mean, it's all crazy number of products. In lending, they buy either the long form or the short form. And I'll leave the 800 number stuff off till the last. So really there's only two billing scenarios. And they all pay the same way. They're all invoiced. There's no credit card billing. In home services, there's multiple schemes for billing. They might pay for a different, a different rate for a call center assisted warm transfer, a pass through call transfer. Um, calls that last 20 seconds might be different than messages left. We might transmit an SMS lead versus an email. I mean, there's just, you know, there's all kinds of configurations of leads. So those are complicated scenarios. There's a series of business logic around which one do we try first, and then as we get to go down the list in value, you know, ultimately we're just trying to clear it for the last possible value. In lending, you're talking about the exact same technical integration with every single lender. They all do this XML feed because the customer value proposition is, we're gonna give you back pricing when you complete this form. In home services, that's just not the way it works. You've got to talk to the contractor on the ground. When the person says, you know, I think my fence is busted or my water heater is not really working, you know, they've got to talk to somebody. There's no, all these ideas of like just schedule a job automatically really don't work for the vast majority of consumers. They don't actually know what's wrong. They don't know if a $400 estimate makes sense or 99 bucks, they just don't know. So, you've got to get them on the phone. The other thing um, that's sort of crucial, and look at my notes here, that was different is um, we, had, we had conceived, we wanted to get into a bidding situation so that the highest bid would potentially get some preference in our system or the star rating of the merchant or the longevity of the merchant. It was sort of our um, idea was to create the quality score, you know, to use Google term, the black box that serves our own needs. And um, you know, the old code was just really brittle. There was no real layer of business logic. It just, it worked, but it worked one way. And so what we were really focused on with Twilio is how much business logic could we program against? And it was kind of referenced this morning, I mean, the business really became about what is the stuff we can think up rather than how do we implement it. 
So if you consider all those billing scenarios, some are invoice, some are credit card. When we sign up a merchant, sales basically works through Salesforce, gets a merchant on the phone. They say, yeah, I want to sign up for your service. They fill out one page. They post it, automatically generates a, a billing account for the credit card, a configuration for their package, which may, basically means what category and zip codes are they going to buy, and digital or SMS or whatever, phone calls. Provisions the phone number for the campaigns they're going to be in, which might be you know, up to 500 different phone numbers for an individual merchant. And then they can, the CSR gets an alert that says, call and confirm the setup with the merchant, get a little extra information, like writes their content for their, their bio and all that stuff, and they go live. I mean, it's literally that easy. Two steps, two forms. We don't have to go off and create a new hunt group. We don't have to, you know, have anybody create a new phone number. We don't have to, we basically don't have to do anything. We just have to think about how many of these things can we sell. And they show up automatically on the website, real time. They show up in all of our distributed feed campaigns. They show up to everybody. They show up as having capacity to marketing. It's, it's, um, that's what I mean by integrated. So I think the things about the home services business that should give you a sense of scale and complexity that Twilio is allowing us to do nowadays that never would have been possible, the level of complexity of, of building this stuff on the other platforms would have been impossible. The home services business is predominantly a pay-per-call environment. It, there is some digital lead transfer, but the highest value customer to a guy in a truck is a phone call of a person who needs service. So, like I said, we have direct pass-through phone calls. We have call center verified digitally posted leads. We have call center assisted warm transfer. We have um, we have alerting systems via SMS, email. Um, our customers are sometimes call centers, like, you know, think of big national franchises. Sometimes they're one truck chucks. Um, we have online and offline. About half of our volume is offline, so those numbers persist for years. These phone numbers produce volume literally for years. Sometimes we provision numbers for a month and we take them away. The campaign's dead. So that's really great. Over, um, over time, we have provisioned and used over 33,000 numbers. Since we launched this platform in June, we've processed a million phone calls and over 10,000 hours of lead transfer recordings. Um, we are, we printed three million directories, each with unique phone numbers this year. So. There's like 100 merchants in each phone book. There's not 3 million phone numbers out there. We've launched 500 phone campaigns, all with distinct numbers. And I, I mean, we never would have been able to do this the old way. We have three outsourced call centers running simultaneously now, all based on business logic and optimal routing. Um, and our coverage API is probably one of the coolest things our partners can, in, can inquire to our API as to what phone number do I need for this geography, location, and merchant. And that might be a publisher, it could be a host and post, and we're getting 300,000 pings per day. And like, you know, that wouldn't have been possible. There's no way to investigate a legacy phone system for something like that, because our, our coverage and phone numbers are changing all day, every day. Um, I'm not leaving a lot of time for talk, for questions. Are there any questions? I can say a few things about where we're headed next. Yeah? Best lesson learned. Thank you. Um, best lesson learned is that what we used to think was our business, which was fancy systems, lots of, you know, expensive software and years of development really just isn't our business at all. Our business is 
the customer experience, the marketing proposition, the pricing to our customers. And you know, all this other stuff is really, it doesn't take very many people anymore. It's not the bulk of our business. I mean, we used to have armies of people that would make operationally that stuff. I mean, you're always saying customers are business, right? But you know, when you've got 50 people working on call center software, it's like, is it really our business or is it not our business? I think the lesson learned is that stuff, the platforms like Twilio really make it easier to focus on your core mission because you just don't have as much resource wrapped up in figuring out how to execute it. Smartphones and apps affecting our business. Um, you know, a consumer really doesn't want to do a loan application on an app. We, they're very good quality leads, but there's just not very many of them. That may change over time as the numbers grow. In home services, it's totally different though, because it's a, you know, I'm at this location and I just, I need this pick a service. And they'll either punch the call me now or they'll dial the number themselves. In home services, it's a big deal. Apps that we are marketing within or users using our mobile environment is growing fast. And we first saw that in real estate. Real estate's inherently mobile too, although the apps at the time weren't very good. And so what I think is gonna happen with apps is the phone interaction is gonna become much, much more valuable because we have an offline conversion. So, you know, if the consumer can say, you know, call me at 3.30, I'll be ready to have this discussion, or I wanna talk to somebody now, or here's permission to call me tomorrow, you know, anything like that. I think that's where we're gonna head. That's one of our, where are we heading? More mobile, more apps. I, yep. I think um, we'll wrap it up right now, but if anyone wants to grab Greg and take further questions offline, feel free to do that. Uh, join me in welcoming, or thanking Greg for that presentation. Thank you. <laughs>